Hi boys, um, I just thought today that I would do a science revision flip classroom for you so that um, you can just revise some of the concepts that we've covered this term. The first one I'm going to talk about is a primary light source. You know that that is a source of light that uh, such as the sun, uh, a torch, um, a candle, anything that produces its own light. Once a primary light source bounces onto another object like a piece of paper or a desk, that's when our um, the light is reflected off the secondary light source and into our eyes. So a piece of paper, a desk, um, a book are all secondary light sources. You would remember that the experiment we did with our peak boxes, we could see the uh, character in the box, but only when the primary light source, the torch, was shined into the box. When, there, when it was complete darkness, um, we tried to see it, but we couldn't quite see it. So we need a primary light source to see any secondary light sources. The second concept I'd like to go over is the um, definitions of opaque, transparent, and translucent. Now, you might remember that opaque is something that completely, hang on, out of screen for one minute, completely blocks the light. So you can't see me behind this because it's opaque. If I then asked you if some light could come through, you might be able to see that you can see you can see that there's something behind it, but not um, not all the light passes through. That's translucent. So an example of translucency might be tissue or baking paper. And most people would remember that something that is transparent, light passes straight through and you can see uh, through that glass. So transparent would be glass, cling wrap, something like that. Okay, something that is opaque, that's something that blocks the light totally. So a book, maybe block out curtains, something like that. Great. The third concept I wanted to go with through with you was how light behaves. So we know that light is going to travel in a straight line unless something interrupts it. So we um, had a uh, experiment with our Hodgson light boxes and we showed where light can be reflected. And we know that um, the shinier the object, uh, such as a mirror or glass, light hits that shiny object. It might even be the back of your laptop case as we discovered in my class the light rays hit that shiny objects and reflect back in exactly the same angle that they hit the glass at. The second one I wanted to go over is refracted. So when um, you might have done an experiment with a spoon in a glass and looking at it, it looks as though the spoon is bent or broken even. So what happens is that the light um, traveling in the thin air hits um, the water which is thicker and slows down. So that's why it appears to our eye that it is bent. Okay, so if we were to look at how that looks, um, it would go 
into the glass of water and refract, which means it bends. Okay, the last one I wanted to go through is absorption. So, which is one of our spelling words, by the way. So when the light goes into some materials, not all of the light passes through. Some of the light, especially if it's a dark colour like black, some of the light uh, energy and heat energy is actually absorbed by the material. Hi boys, um, back again. I just wanted to show you um, some of the information that we've gathered about how light is split. So Sir Isaac Newton used a square based pyramid to split light. So the light that we see every day is white and when it's put through a prism um, the white light is often split into um, separate colours so that we can see a rainbow. So what actually happens is um, you know that as it rains, um, there's millions of tiny droplets, the sunshine comes out and the light hits the um, water droplet going from thin air. It then slows down into the thicker water and splits. What happens then is the light um, hits the back of the water droplet and is reflected back again on the same angle. So we know that going in the light going into the droplet is refra um, refracted. Oops. Then it is reflected off the back again and splits. And then going from the thick water out into the thin air, it is refracted once again. Just pretty amazing. Now you would know that the colours of our rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, um, blue, indigo, which if you don't know is a very deep purple, and violet. So see if you can remember some of those, um, all of those colours for the rainbow. Hi boys, lastly but not leastly, um, we did an activity, Big Shadow, Little Shadow, where we used torches to shine a light onto uh, different, uh, to a glue stick and we talked about whether the shadow will get larger or smaller depending on the distance away from the light source it was. So if we were to use a torch and to shine it onto a tennis ball, there'd be two parts to our shadow. The darker part is called the umbra and the shadow which is less dark behind that is the penumbra. Okay, so if we were to be standing um, at Nudgee and it was late afternoon, our shadow that we cast would be quite large, okay, because it's down here from the western sun now. Okay, thanks. Lastly, boys, um, talking about our big shadow, little shadow experiment, we discussed what a fair test might be, okay. So the variables or the elements in that experiment were uh, the glue stick that was standing up against the measuring page. Um, the other variable was the ruler that we used to measure and the torch that we were using to shine light onto um, the glue stick. Now we did not change the paper. We didn't change where the glue stick was standing and we didn't change the ruler. So in a fair test to get um, an accurate result, we only change one element or one variable to get to make sure that our test is accurate. Thanks for listening. Do well in the test. Bye.